I've done a, quite a few stories when it comes to the Asian American community over the last couple of months, over the last year or so, especially when they got that anti-Asian hate crime bill put on the books for them for hate crimes, quote unquote, that they faced during the pandemic because of their race, their, you know, their, their ethnic background, nationality, however you want to put it. But now I'm here to talk about them again because the governor of New York, who you see right there, who is the PC woman right there, whose name is Kathy Hochul, who, of course, became the governor after the whole scandal with Andrew Cuomo and him having to resign as the governor for the state of New York. She announced that the state of New York will be giving $10 million dollars to the Asian American communities that were hit or affected by the pandemic. Let's keep also in mind here that of where this pandemic started. So you're going to give money to the same people whose origin comes from the, from the same region in which the pandemic started at. That's what you're saying. Let's also keep in mind, as small as an enclave as the Asian American community is in New York, or maybe it's a good sizable one, because, you know, New York is a melting pot of different cultures. They're not hurt for money. They're actually very financially well off. I would say they're probably right underneath the Jewish community up there, because, you know, the Jewish community up there, they practically run everything up there. Um, But the Asians are like right behind them. When it comes to finances. So you're literally giving money to a group that really doesn't need it. You're just giving money just to give money. And I've noticed that they've been they do that quite often. But when black people say. We demand reparations and tangibles, they act like they don't have the money. I actually posted something on Twitter the other day where I said America uh, can crowbar its wallet open for all these other groups to give them money even when they don't need it but when it comes to black people and our tangibles and reparations they get more tighter than Chris Jenner's face at a Botox convention can anyone say that I'm lying or not nah? but one thing I notice about this picture is I see another familiar face Mayor Eric Adams now y'all know I did a video about him when he said that he is the Biden of Brooklyn. I said at that point, black people up there should be very afraid. But I don't know. Like I told people, we know we know a, a lot of people give black people a, a a a a bad rep when it comes to voting for Democrats and everything like that. But I don't want to believe, or I I'm choosing not to believe that many black people voted for Eric Adams based on from what I've heard. Any and I can, let me get more confirmation for all of my New York subscribers. Can y'all let me know down in the comments? Did do you know any black people in mass that voted for Eric Adams? Because from what I've heard, I don't think many people voted for him or many black people anyway voted for him. And that's what I keep trying to tell people. I say, yeah, we know that black people overwhelmingly vote Democrat, but I would not be surprised if a lot of the, if a lot of black people have pulled back from it. But then you'll have other groups of people that will vote Democrat because they know that the, um, the Democrats won't do anything for black people specifically so in order to keep that status quo you'll have other groups that will vote for people who are democrats out of spite just to make sure black people don't get anything you have people out there that will do that and i feel like i'm one of the few people that actually acknowledges that possibility but yeah they're about to get more money more money 10 million (sighs) dollars because you know when the pandemic hit a lot of businesses got affected but guess what asian businesses were not the only ones affected it was everybody's business got affected you even had major retail stores ended up closing its doors because of what happened back in 2020 but you know what let me let me just read this article New York Governor Kathy Hochul announced Sunday that $10 million will be given to organizations supporting Asian American communities disproportionately affected by the pandemic. And you want to know what's so crazy? Remember when they came out with that stat back in 2020 and saying that black people will be the ones affected the most by it because of our, you know, our history, our health history. But they didn't take that into consideration when they were doling out funds. All they said, oh, well, you know, 
just take the you know just take the thing well back at the time they didn't have it but when it eventually rolled out that's when they started to pump it and you know the whole get your booty to the polls we got campaigns to take the thing when it started to roll out all these other communities get money talk about a slap in the face the funding will be allocated through the Asian American Federation, the Coalition for Asian American Children and Families, and the Chinese American Planning Council. And these organizations will distribute the money to community groups that provide direct services. Now, look at that. They have organizations that they're sending the money out and then they distribute it out evenly. That's one thing black people, well, black Americans in particular, lack are organizations like those. Because I, I don't know where an organization w for the equivalent of black people would fit on any of the organizations that I just read. But that's, of course, by design. The COVID 19 pandemic has been a devastating effect on so many vulnerable and marginalized communities across the New York State, Holchul said in a statement. The Asian American community was especially hard hit not only by the, vi the virus, but by an increase in hate and violent crimes. The AAF will get $6.8 million to provide support for organizations that have witnessed a sudden increase in demand for services due to the pandemic. See, now that's what they're doing because they know that they provide a service that they need. So that's why they're getting all the money. They figure black people, you don't provide a service that we want or need. So why should we give anything to you? And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if that's the one of the talking points they'll use when it comes to the reason why they don't or have not distributed out them tangibles because they figure what could that do for our economy if we give you this money um it shouldn't matter it's money old it's a debt that is old it doesn't matter if it helps you or not point blank period Ju Han deputy director of AAF said these resources are long overdue the lack of investment that supports the most vulnerable members of the pan-asian community was glaringly obvious during the pandemic when we scrambled to find resources to meet the needs that government wasn't able to, Han said in an email to NBC Asia America. The rise of anti-Asian violence and the sharp and sustained increases in demand for direct services has been staggering. Notice that when they started to get a rise in quote-unquote anti-Asian hate crimes, they got a bill, they got organizations, they got funding. Almost in one fell swoop and immediately it didn't take them years to get it. Black people have been talking about getting reparations for two, three, four decades now and still haven't gotten one dime. Like I said, black people in America are treated like the stepchild or the bastard child that they, the parent didn't, that America didn't want, but they ended up with. AAF will directly fund 59 community organizations that provide food pantries for families impacted by job loss, offer home delivered meals to older adults, run after school programming for children affected by remote learning, offer case management to help clients access affordable housing, immigration legal services and domestic violence services and offer vital mental health services, according to Han. Organizations include Arab American Association of New York, Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund, Chinese American Family Alliance for Mental Health, and Saki for South Asian Women. Data published by the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism at California State University, San Bernardino, showed that anti-Asian hate crimes increased by 339% last year compared to the year before, which is part of an overall 11% increase in suspected hate crimes reported across a dozen of America's largest cities. The increase in anti-Asian violence and hate combined with the economic devastation of the pandemic have left our communities in crisis, Wayne Ho, president and CEO of the Chinese American Planning Council, said in a statement. The CBC will receive about $700,000 to expand public access to resources, expand workforce services, enhance wraparound case management, and expand early childhood development. Asian American businesses were hit on multiple fronts during the pandemic, including closures, language barriers, making it difficult to access government aid and fear of safety as anti-Asian violence rose. Nearly 90 percent of small Asian Americans firms lost revenue last year, a rate higher than for other racial and ethnic groups, according to a study released by the New York Federal Reserve and AARP in March. The $10 million in funding will come from the New York 
New York's $212 billion spending plan, the largest budget in the state's history, which passed in April. $212 billion spending plan. I wonder how many black people are a part of that plan. Now, I'm going to pause right here right quick and mention this other story that I did back in, I want to say it was January of this year, but it may have been January of last year. I can't remember. If y'all remember, in the state of Oregon, there was a fund, like a uh, like a Wuvit relief fund that they were creating or did create specifically for black people. And I talked about it on my channel. And that fund was about $62 million. Now, that would have been phenomenal for the people in, in, in Oregon, be, uh, considering that the black population in Oregon is very, very tiny. So they would have been able to, to really evenly distribute that out. But it was a $62 million package, a, a Wuvit relief package. I, I call it that, but it was something else. But that's basically what it was. You know, for black people who had businesses and everything that was affected by sort of like what they're doing with this. And right when they were getting ready to give that money out, here you have this these Hispanics, Latinos, you know, the brown, come in and shoehorn their way in there by force and say that, what about us? And I said, that is exactly why that black and brown coalition thing does not work. And because they shoehorn their way in, they had to put a pause on before they just started to distribute the money out. They never do that with any other group. Anytime black people are about to get something that is for them, you have these other groups come in and insert and crowbar their way into our affairs and thus pushing us more further to the back. Not anymore. Because let me tell you something right now. If you interfered with me getting my resources, there's going to be a problem. Let's just put it this way. Furniture would be moving. It's like the one rare occasion when black people was about to get something. Here they come. Here it is right here. This is what I was talking about. And it was and this is dated December 18, 2020. State $62 million relief fund for black Oregonians. Suspends operation and hands over the remaining money to federal court. Now, this was something that was approved in July of 2020 for that they were going to get all of this. But then, it, like, if you notice when I typed it into the into Google, so many articles kept coming up re behind it because they started the question, should they get all this money? Why are they getting all this money? The same reason everyone else is getting funds. We should get them, too, or they should get them, too, because I can't say we because I don't live out there, but they should get it, too. But they didn't get all of this money. They were supposed to get all of this and they didn't get all of it. They got only got some of it. I think they said that they got all of it until there was like eight point eight million dollars left. And that rest of that money went to the um, to the federal court. So they got shortchanged. Meanwhile, when I was just talking about they're going to get all of that money and they're going to distribute it evenly. No questions asked. See what I mean? That's why they say we have no allies. We are legit on our own. And I'm actually fine with that. It's just that you have to separate um, the people who are going to do and take action versus those who don't and won't take action. It's crazy. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. If you have not done so already, make sure you go ahead and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video or go live.